So a thing I hear quite a lot is, ah, renewables, they'll never answer the problem. We need so much energy and they can't produce enough. What we should be thinking about is coal and nuclear and other ways of collecting our energy and forget about renewables like wind and solar because they're just not up to the job. And uh, that's a fair enough point, but it does make you wonder what is the size of the problem and is it possible that solar could actually do it or do we just have this pipe dream and wishful hope? Well to answer that kind of problem of course what we've got to do is know the size of, of the problem and for that what would be handy to know is the amount of energy that we're going to consume, the amount of energy that the sun gives out and how well a solar panel will convert that into a usable form and then we'll have some idea of what the scale of this problem is. Now, according to the US Department of Energy, the energy consumption by 2030 is expected to be somewhere in the order of 700 quadrillion BTUs. And that is a very large number. We can convert BTUs, which are a thermal unit, into kilowatts relatively simply, and what it gives us is round about 200,000 terawatt hours. Again, another massive number in terms of the amount of energy we need. Now, if we're looking at something like solar, then of course what we're interested in is how much energy does the sun actually beam down onto the earth per square meter, and it turns out it's around about a kilowatt. If we think about a solar cell covering that um, square metre at more or less 20% efficiency, because they're round about that, then we get about 200 watts per square metre of energy provided and converted from the sun through a solar panel. 200 watts? 200,000 terawatts? Hmm. So let's use 70% as the average amount of sunlight that we get, and that's roughly right. Some places get more, like 90-95% when you're thinking of places like Arabia and Africa, but let's use 70% anyway. And what that means is we get roughly 265 Sundays per year of roughly 8 hours of solar per Sunday. It gives us around about 2,000 hours of sunlight per year that's hitting that square metre where we've got our solar panel. If our solar panel is producing about 200 watts per square metre, we multiply the two together, we get about 400 kilowatt hours per square metre per year. Incidentally, if we assume we're using 15 kilowatt hours per day times 365 divided by 400 kilowatt hours per square metre, each house using 15 kilowatt hours per day is going to need about 13.69 uh, square metres of solar panel to meet its annual needs. Of course, this is all a bit estimate, really. But we get an idea of what that can do, and therefore we can divide out one by the other. <laughs> we get roughly half a million square kilometres, or around about 200,000 square miles. That's a big area. That's about the size of Spain. But in their right mind would consider covering Spain in solar panels. But we can give this a little bit of context. Let's say we divide it into 5,000 super sites. That would be on average 25 super sites uh, per country, although the US would actually need something in the order of 1,000 super sites. But let's say 25 super sites per country, and they would be around about 10 kilometers per side for each super site. Now the UAE, is planned to build a super site of three kilometers per side, and if they increase that to seven, another seven kilometers, they'd actually have enough to power the entire country. According to the United Nations, the amount of rainforest destroyed each year is roughly an area measuring 170,000 square kilometers. So if this program would be gone to build these super sites, actually would be finished in three years. Another way of looking at this is that the um, Sahara Desert is in the region of 9 million square kilometres. There is an estimate that the unpopulated area of the Sahara Desert is actually bigger than that, but if you were to cover that area in solar panels, you'd produce something like 630 terawatts of power, and currently our world demand is round about 15 terawatts, so there's this massive margin of error in what we're actually talking about, but the area required in terms of unpopulated or unpopulatable area is just huge. Another way of looking at this is highways. In the US, about 94,000 square kilometers are covered 
by highway. That's at a density of um, 800 kilometers per thousand square kilometers with a total length of 75,440 kilometers of highway in the US at the moment. If we were to mount solar panels on those highways, it would re actually produce 20% of the world's energy need. And there's a little bit of irony here in that the USA consumes about 20% of the world's energy. So if every country put solar panels above its highway infrastructure, we'd be done in about 30 years or so. So another way of looking at this perhaps would be golf courses. A golf course covers about a square kilometre and there's about 40,000 of them around in the world, or it represents 10% of the area needed to cover in solar panels to be able to produce this amount of energy. Of course, it's quite possible that the only people that would complain there are the golfers. <laughs> of course, this is more or less a worst case scenario. It's talking about um, if we needed to produce all of the world's energy from just solar panels, that's more or less what we would need. But of course there are other things. There are uh, wind power, wave power, existing hydro uh, infrastructures. Uh, world wave power is roughly 2,100 terawatt hours. So we need to extract 1% of that to actually answer the world's energy needs. And of course there's wind. Uh, with wind, a 5 megawatt installation produces something in the region of 17 gigawatt hours per annum. So in, answer, in order to answer the world's projected energy need, we'd need something like 11 million of them, taking up 5.86 million square kilometres of land. Again, they sound like big numbers. You've got to remember, there's over 500 million cars on the road at the moment. So in terms of manufacturing capability, we certainly have that capability. And even in terms of land usage, we certainly have that available land. And that would be if we answered that need from wind alone. I did mention existing hydro because existing hydro power represents about 6% of the world's energy production. There's a problem with installing new hydro and it can be quite damaging to water tabled aquifers and uh, marine life. And a decommissioning rate of sort of 2% uh, every five years or so, then the land reduction required for solar would obviously be somewhere in the region of 5 to 25% of reduction of the land as solar came on stream. So what about nuclear? Well, nuclear currently supplies around about 2.5% of the world's energy needs, and it's expected to double by 2030. Now, these are the Atomic Energy Commission numbers that I'm using. Uh, but even if it doubles, then its actual percentage of contribution will fall because it's not able to um, increase its capacity fast enough. And according to the Atomic Energy Commission, we actually only have enough uranium left for the next 80 years. So it's really in itself a short-term solution. That's based on current consumption. A current plant, of which is about 500, and let's say they double to 1,000, puts out about 3 cubic metres per annum. So at the end of that 80 year period, what we're going to be left with is something like 240,000 cubic metres of spent uranium fuel. That's bigger than the Pantheon. Of course, bunging everything into supersized solar parks does bring up distribution problems, but as I pointed out earlier, a surprisingly small home installation can in fact reach most of the energy needs that a home might ha have, restricting distribution to maybe industry needs or centre of city needs. And of course, the technology is moving on. The latest Sandler announcement actually decreases those figures by something like 40%. And we've talked about future of solar when you're looking at putting it on the sides of buildings in major urban structures. So, to my mind, given an old technology, ludicrous figures for energy consumption, then we can certainly generate the world's energy need from just solar. And if we support it by everything else, other renewables, wind and wave, home installation, then solar can most definitely be the answer to our energy needs. I personally think what's holding us back is the desire to do it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe. <coughs>